Well, I'm a father. Uh, I have a 15-year-old son. I uh, graduated from Westminster High School in Colorado. I am a uh, fourth-generation Colorado, and I was born in Sterling, Colorado. I was uh, fortunate enough to be able to use uh, the GI Bill um, from my time in the Marine Corps, and I graduated from a, a Colorado college, Metropolitan State College of Denver. I uh, worked eight years in a, uh, a box factory, a corrugated box factory. So I've kind of got working class roots, um, but deep roots in Colorado. I'm, I'm just really proud of my family and, and where I've come from. Someone's got to be there to actually represent the people. I knew right away that I would be able to represent um, Colorado and Coloradoans and not be bought. I'll vote the right way every single time. Um, I'm not just going to toe the party line. Um, I'm not perfect. You know, we don't need perfect politicians. We just need somebody that will actually stand up and fight for us. And I'm willing to do that. And that's the reason why I got into politics. First, I was unaffiliated for many years. And I didn't want to be, you know, put in a certain party or certain position. Um, I just wanted to do the right thing. But I realized that you had to choose a major party to get elected in higher office. And so I chose the Democratic Party at the time in 2007 because I thought the Democratic Party cared about working class folks. But what I've come to find out, especially now uh, more than ever, is the two-party system has failed us. And it's not about the right thing to do. It's, it's about winning at all costs above everything else. It's not about doing what's right. And so um, I'm disappointed in the Democratic Party. I'm disappointed in the two-party system in general. And we, we have to do better. Um, actually, a fellow legislator called me and said, have you seen the, the news? And I hadn't seen it. And um, before I actually read the news reports, at 11.49 a.m., I received a text from one of my colleagues, Matt Gray, asking for my resignation. Before I even had the chance to read the news reports, and I was absolutely devastated. Um, I was shocked, and I just didn't know what to do. Um, several hours after the false allegations came out in the press, I decided to um, have a press release. And in that press release, which is still on my website, it, I stated that I take the allegations seriously, but I was asking the accusers to please um, fill out a formal complaint. I said it respectfully and sensitively and thoughtfully, but in the back of my mind, the reason why I did that is because I knew that the stories would change. And they have. And they've changed over and over and over in the press. Um, so that was, I, I feel good about asking them to file formal complaints because it's obvious now that, that everything is a lie. Well, like I said, that the first thing that was kind of shocking was the allegations in the first place that I knew were false. And then the second thing that was obvious to me that was fairly shocking was that, like I say, that within 49 minutes of the accusations coming out in the press, Matt Gray asked for my resignation. Within several hours, the lieutenant governor of Colorado asked for my resignation. Within hours. Within four hours, well, within four and a half hours of the first allegations coming out in the press, the Denver Post actually had an opinion editorial piece in their newspaper online within four and a half hours of the allegations stating that I should resign before I even had the chance to, to have a press release or tell anybody my side of the story. And so that was the second piece that was so shocking. The false allegations, number one, and then quickly following the, fa the, the allegation within literally minutes and hours, Democrats, 
My fellow Democrats in Colorado asking for my resignation before even hearing my side of the story. It was, it was devastating. It's obviously coordinated. So you can see um, that it's a coordinated effort on Twitter especially. You can see where um, someone had sent out an email. Um, they call them email alerts. Um, and it's the same people on Twitter commenting over and over again. And so it's obvious that it's a smear campaign and that it's, it's, it's coordinated. It, it, it looks like a regular campaign, to be honest with you. And um, it's really disappointing. Faith Winter is running for state Senate. And the Republicans right now have an 18 to 17 majority in our Colorado State Senate. And so when I took that polygraph and passed it and it shows that Faith Winter is lying, that means that their candidate for state Senate, the person that they're counting on to flip the state Senate is lying. And so it's really disappointing because it's um, her allegations in her formal complaint included sexual assault. And she stated in her formal complaint that um, I grabbed her buttocks, and that's a lie. This whole thing started, I don't think it started out necessarily about politics. It started out way back in 2014 when Faith uh, asked me to sit in a hot tub with her, and um, I rejected her. She was a married person at the time, and so was I. I could tell weeks later, months later, even a year later, she was embarrassed by that. And I think she thought that I had something on her because we live in the same state Senate district. And at the time in 2015 and 2016, she actually thought I was running for that state Senate district, the same state Senate district that she wanted to run for, the same state Senate district that she's running for right now. And so that gave her additional motivation, I think, to get something on me. I can remember in April of 2016, just a couple weeks before the Stoney's accusation, she asked me to support her for assistant majority leader, and I told her that I would support her for assistant majority leader. But I volunteered the information also that I was going to support Casey Becker for majority leader. And so about a week later, she came back to my desk and initiated another conversation and said, Steve, Alec and I, Alec Garnett and I cut a deal and he's running for assistant majority leader and I'm going to run for majority leader. And I reminded her, I said, look, Faith, I told you a week ago that I would support you for assistant majority leader, but I can't support you for majority leader because I've already told Casey Becker I would support her. And above everything at the Capitol, you always should keep your word. In fact, that's what I told my constituents way back in when I was on city council, when I ran for state representative in 2012, that you're gonna get the truth from me. And when I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. Imagine that it was you being falsely accused of sexual assault or sexual harassment, and it's false. Imagine if it was your mom or your dad or your son or your daughter being falsely accused of sexual harassment. You'd wanna fight back, right? Because it's not true. Our system is broken horribly. And it's gonna take us the people to actually take our system back. The two-party system has failed us miserably. We've got parties who care more about winning at all costs, and they'll do anything to win. See, during a campaign, what both sides do is first you destroy your opponent and your opponent's credibility and then you try to build yourself up, right? And, and it's got to the point where the regular people out there can see through it. And um, we have to take our system back. We have to take our political process back. We have to take our government back. <sighs> I 
I think they're going to double down. I think they'll triple down. Um, they recognize now that I'm not going to do what they wanted me to do. I was called by a party leader and she said, Steve, you know, I know you haven't done anything criminal or wrong, but you're a smart guy and you can see, you know, what's going to happen. So why don't you just resign now? This was way back in November 11th, November 12th. Now they see that I'm not going to do that. And why should I? Why should I resign when I'm telling the truth? Faith Winter needs to resign for falsely accusing one of her Democratic colleagues of something that I didn't do. Um, boy, I've drafted some really good bills for 2018. Um, bills that I'm really proud of that are good for um, Coloradoans. My first five years in the state legislature, over 60% of my bills have passed doing really great things for people. Um, foreclosure prevention, um, basic fairness bills for regular class folks, um, working class people. And um, to go back to your earlier question on what do you think is gonna happen, I think the Democrats are gonna try to kill my bills in 2018. But people will be able to see through that too because I've passed 60% of my bills and they know they're solid bills. And so I'm going to continue fighting for the people of Colorado like I've always done. From the time I was 18 years old in the Marine Corps to my time on Thornton City Council to my five years in the state legislature, I've always done the right thing. Whether I'm in the state legislature or whether I'm the next Colorado State Treasurer or whether I'm just advocating for working class folks, um, I'm going to continue to fight for the people.